and welcome to the Gates and Peebles for the club's Festival of Rugby event. It's Peebles Centenary Year and later on we'll be bringing you the highlights of the women's and the men's events. But first, a look at the under-16s competition which took place on Friday night. Stuart Cameron reports. Despite the layoff of many months, rugby got underway again in the borders with the under-16 competition. And right away it was clear Peebles would be the team to beat, powering past Kelso by 41 points to nil. White came next with a 20 points to 7 victory over Duns. Then Gala took the scalp of Selkirk, nilling them and putting 24 points on the board. The closest match in round one was Melrose Wasps against Jed Thistle, with Melrose edging the win by 17 points to 10. All four losing teams went into the bowl and it was Selkirk who won the final by 24 points to 5 to lift the trophy. But all eyes were on Peebles in their semi-final against Hoyk and it was a comfortable victory by 36 points to nil. In the other semi, Gala ran in three tries to defeat Melrose Wasps 17-0 and booked their spot in the final. Again, it was one-way traffic with a 17-0 cushion by half-time. And after the break, Peebles ploughed on to record a 36-0 victory, giving them a massive 113 points in just three ties, with no team able to score against them. A fantastic win and 19 tries chalked up along the way. 113 points scored and nothing conceded. What, were, what was the most impressive part of the, the whole evening for you? Um, I think the zero points conceded because that's a big thing we've been working on in training, defence. So I think that's a good, good uh, the best part. I don't think anybody got in our 22, maybe only once. Everybody's fast in the team, so it helps a lot. So a fantastic start to the season for you and the boys. So what's yeah. next? Hopefully winning more more silverware in the because we've got a few sevens coming up and then we can in the 15s go to the Scottish Cup so hopefully more trophies. A fabulous way to start off the festival with a win for the Peebles under 16 team scoring 113 points and 19 tries and conceding nothing. Next up it's a women's competition taking place here for the first time. Six teams including Kelso ladies took part and with a roundup of that tournament Jamie Grant. Hearts and Balls with a team to beat today, having won the Edinburgh Sevens only a week prior to today's event. To get to the final, they had to take on two opponents, Scottish Universities and Broughton. They got a total combined score of 130 points and conceded nothing. In the final, they faced off against Christophen Cougars, and here are the best tries from this match. was going to be really physical um, but no the girls brought the physicality um, and we got a good few points on the board so yeah, happy days. You, you didn't concede a try today? No we didn't um, it's something that we spoke about last week we really wanted our defence um, to kind of step up um, girls put in some um, some decent hits we worked really well in our chains of three so um, as a captain I am super super pleased. Yeah and you mentioned last week there so that's like two wins Two weekends. Yes, well two done. wins on the bounce. Edinburgh City Sevens last week. Um, fantastic tournament. Um, and the girls played really, really well there too. So um, two wins. Um, off to celebrate now, I think. Some terrific rugby played by the ladies and well done to Hearts and Balls, Mighty Bobs, on lifting the first ever Women's Sevens trophy. Finally for today is round one of Kings of the Sevens with the holders Jed Forrest looking to retain the title. Here's Ryan Nixon with news of what happened in the pools. Bigger beat Peebles and Hoyk to progress from Pool A and Suckwick were too strong for both Watsonians and Curry in Pool B. Hearts and Balls left it a little late to gain a lead against Melrose and win Pool C with Kelso finishing bottom. And in Pool D, Berwick lost both of their games against Gala and Jed Forrest, with Gala then going on to beat Jed and secure their place in the semi-final. And so to the semi-final, with the first one being Selkirk versus Bigger.
Selkirk really strong at the set piece, so it's their line out just inside the hearts and balls half. And you know, Scotty White has got them well versed in this. It'll be a lift and then down the scrum half, and it'll be interesting to see this back line coming onto the ball and testing the bobs early. Unlucky there from Andrew McComb, just got fingertips there, but it just uh, drifted forward. And um, Adam McComb, with a, I would say, a pinpoint, a pinpoint uh, line out, but it was just out with the, the stretch of the finger for Andrew McComb, and it goes forward for. Um, a, a scrum to the hearts and balls but I have been really really impressed with Andrew McComb he's, he's a youngster who's uh, maybe not had a lot of a lot of exposure in 15s but he's really shown up well here in the 7s tournament as uh, the hearts and balls and Selkirk packed down for a scrum a few minutes into this final here and it's popped out in the hearts and balls side good footwork there uh, from Dale Gordon who just dribbles it to his teammate over on the far side now they're trying to uh, go round the outside go through the middle and they just pop the ball over to Aidan Boyle Aidan Boyle's got a bit of room at keeping the ball alive offload back inside to Dale Gordon who's started the move, he gets brought down to earth and it's uh, James Ferguson again, the ever present in support and keeps the ball back on the hearts and ball side but tenacious defence there from Callum Anderson just tried to get his man and it's going to be a penalty to Selkirk and they'll be looking to try and set up an attacking platform here but again good scramble defence from Selkirk. Selkirk have started poorly with their set piece, poor kick off, poor line out but now they've got a chance to get their hands on the ball and they've played the ball wide to wide and it'll be interesting to see if Bob's fall off any of these challenges that Selkirk have with their ball carriers, but they've done well to work it wide, and this is going to open up space in the middle of the field. And Scott McClymont taking the ball in, just the, the haunched over running action of Scott McClymont, really good player. Ryan Cottrell now taking the quick penalty, finding his uh, support runner there in Ben Pickles. Ben Pickles now finds Callum Anderson. Callum Anderson, Adam McComb over on the far side. He's got support there. He finds a little gap. He's weaving through, stretching, gets in for the score, and it's first blood to Selkirk. Great score there from Selkirk. Stretch the ball, stretching the defence, even stretching the top, but Aaron McComb powers over for the first score. Ben Pickles has been really impressive all afternoon, high high skill level and Selkirk get the, the penalty, they tap, they play to the width, the ball carry brings in three defenders and that freed up the space in the middle of the field, but really strong skills, you can tell Scotty White has got these boys well drilled because they've had very few handling errors and then a show and go leg drive gets them to the line a great first score for Selkirk but the Bobs will be disappointed with that because they just fell off the challenge there conversion is successful for Aaron McComb as well the flag is lofted in the air and there's an opportunity here it's Ferguson now to Rudy Campbell Rudy Campbell is just going to try and face up this defence stepping back inside one two he's got another one goes the other way Aaron McComb with a great challenge there from the sweeper Scott McClymont trying to do a bit of footwork but doesn't come off correctly and it's now recycled the other Ferguson now is uh, stretching it a little bit wider and that is fell into the hands of Mark Leckie Mark Leckie takes it into contact now and it's getting a little bit scrappy over on that far side the referee saying Selkirk not rolling away and hearts and balls go quick again but the referee is going to pull that back and it's certainly a good opportunity here to launch another attacking platform for the hearts and balls and it's uh, just weighing up their options, maybe catching their breath as Ferguson, he finds Boyle. Boyle now passes along the line and they're going route one now, trying to offload the ball. Well cut out there from Callum Anderson who had the opportunity to perhaps um, close off the, the offload. But it's Ferguson now who picks up and goes goes route one. I think that's the, the way he likes to play his seven rugby. The other Ferguson now goes out wide, there's oodles of space, out wide, twists and turns, goes over for the score and Mark Lecky replies for the hearts and balls. They made hard work of that. Selkirk really made them graft and they've pushed them wide so it makes that conversion difficult. And it's Aaron McComb now. He passes it out wide and it's now Andrew Grant Suti who um, passes out a little bit further onto the wing to Pickles. Pickles uh, just twists, gets the ball back, recycles it. Selkirk want to try and make sure they keep this ball and it's um, been it's slowed down there from the hearts and balls trying to wrap up man and ball. Knees on the ground. The player should really be releasing there. Penalty there to Selkirk. And they'll just want to try and slow this game down a little bit, get control of the ball and put the hearts and balls under pressure. Yeah, this is a chance for Selkirk again. That You see they're, they're still playing inside their 22 and that they've got to be sure of what they're doing here. There was no commitment to what the, their movement was there and the, the pick and go close, you're asking a lot of your support runners to get to you, but now they've got a chance to stretch. But the hearts and balls are, are really battling and scrapping in defence to make sure that Selkirk have to work for it. Yeah, Ryan Cottrell just taking the ball up into the halfway line and it was a, a little bit of a contentious decision there because it got offloaded by Ryan Cottrell on the ground and it, it came off the foot of uh, Scott McClyman, went back forward but the referee's just uh, blown for half time and 
barely been able to catch her breath. It's been end-to-end. -end. It's been very aggressive, very attritional as well. But Selka could go into the half with a, a slender seven points to five lead, Bruce. Yeah, it's, it's not been a, a great first half. Both teams just look tired and that's impacting on their skill level. There's been knock-ons, there's been penalties given away for some pretty daft stuff. I think Scott White will be disappointed with the accuracy of his team because they've spent time together coaching and refining what they're doing. The kickoff that didn't go 10, the line out that's overthrown, they've tried to play from their own 22 and made mistakes and that's given the Hearts and Balls team a real lift because they've been able to get turnovers and they've spent some time on the ball and really frustrated Selkirk. Kelly, I'm always interested. There's a little huddle there with the, the assistant referees and the referees. What's the patter in there just now? What do you think they're going to be talking about? They'll just be discussing the assistant referees that you have at each end and, and at each touchline will just be kind of helping the referee out, just keep an eye on the offsides at the rucks and watch out for, you know, the, the kind of wee offsides that are happening or wee kind of niggles off the ball. So it's just a kind of reminder... Uh, you, you normally have a wee list, kind of wee checklist of main things you want to watch out for and the assistant referees are there just to give the referee just a wee reminder of, of what those are. Mighty Bobs will be what, trying to do a double after the ladies won the inaugural Helen Cleghorn Memorial Trophy in the ladies tournament this morning and they'll be wanting to try and make it two out of two. But Selkirk will have a lot to say about that as we get the second half underway. Scott McClyman under that, he scoops it out of there, just into the bread basket and sets it up well there from a platform to attack from. And it's uh, now Aaron McComb. Aaron McComb spins it out wide and we've got a replacement there on to the park there. It's, it went to Pickles, but it was um, Clarkson. Henry Clarkson who's uh, just drifted that ball forward in the pass and it's just what you don't want to do after half time in a tight game is to do one of these little silly errors Bruce Yeah it's another one where Selkirk have had possession and they've just gifted it back to hearts and balls without them really having to work very hard for it, Clarkson's got pace to burn, he's come off the sprint in the circuit, Scotty White saw some potential and said right come and play some sevens and he's done really well this afternoon but that was uh, kind of unforgivable error throwing that ball forward. And now he's going to have to work hard over on the far side because Kyle Adams knows his way to the try line and he's uh, brushed off the first attempt gets down on the second and hearts and balls now just outside the Selkirk 22 and it's uh, now Nathan Ross who's just trying to encroach that defensive line but has just drifted forward there and now Selkirk have the ball they've got options on the right hand side as Aaron McComb just takes his time with the ball trying to slow down the pace but sometimes not what you want to be doing in your 22 good play there from Clarkson just evasive we've got numbers up for Selkirk on this side Andrew McComb spots a little gap goes through takes on Ferguson and it's been brushed over there I think that's Aaron McComb who's burrowing in there offside there from um, Nathan Ross just uh, had a little bit of a brain fart there just coming round the side thinking the ball was open and Selkirk in a position where they could have been under pressure they get a little bit of relief there I'm surprised they didn't go to the touchline there to try and eat up some territory they're having to play from deep inside their 22 and they're, they're tired That they've thrown a few errors they've knocked the ball on there is, there is still the chance they've got boys that can go the length but I was surprised that they've run that and not taken the territory gains. They've got boys there like Ben Pickles who almost unlocked the defence but Adam McCombs got certainly got a lot of magic in his feet and he's uh, just manipulating the defence with the, with the ball just showing them it using the dummy runner there and Scott McClyman and it's now um, I think it's Clarkson he has found McClyman there McClyman's found McComb McComb's got a little bit of company there he threw almost a hospital pass but I think uh, Grant Suti done really well to stay firm in the uh, when he retrieved that ball as Hearts and Balls try and contest at the ruck to try and spoil this Andrew McComb is going in there to try and clean things up and it's now Aaron McComb Aaron McComb just dancing about him and McClyman just trying to slow the pace down keep the ball and trying to really manipulate this defence not working so far but it's now a penalty to Selkirk again for a high tackle. And it's certainly something, Kelly, that the, the referees are trying hard to come down on these uh, the, the tackles riding a bit too high. Yeah, it's been one of those uh, new things that have kind of came out this season that we really want to clamp down on the height of the tackles. And especially in sevens when it's a, a good advantage that, the, that you'll notice the referee blows up pretty much straight away as soon as there's a high tackle rather than playing advantage. Yeah, safety critical, as you see, obviously it's very important that the um, the players are well looked after and the referees are doing a great job of that, especially with decisions like that. But it's Andrew McCombs' um, last play, at least for the now, because Ewan McDougall is on as a replacement, a lot of experience there 
brought off the bench for Selkirk is um, Scott McClymont hoisted in there it's went too long it's there to attack but Calm Anderson just lost his, lost his foot in a little bit and James Ferguson scooped up the loose ball takes it forward over the halfway line and now it's going over to the far side here for the hearts and balls it was a good pass out wide there from Boyle and Boyle has found his uh, mucker Kyle Adams who's trying to just go round the outside but not a lot of teams have um, went round the outside of Selkirk this afternoon good defence there from Ewan McDougall puts in a big hit in midfield and Selkirk put a lot of pressure on Hearts and Balls forcing them back but Rudy Campbell certainly got feet that he'll be able to evade Scott McClymont's not going to give up though Trekking back puts in a huge hit just in front of the stand side here because that was really really dangerous there James Ferguson then picking up the ball and wins the penalty great defensive cover in there from Scott McClymont yeah, I was a, a bit daft by Rudy Campbell he's tackled he's had a really strong carry he releases the ball to try and get up and play it again and then brings it back in so another one of a bit of a gift to the opposition Selkirk now beginning to feel the effects of the ties that they've had a couple of boys pulling up with cramps I'm sucking on the oxygen but you saw before I said that I thought they should kick for touch and gain some territory and then they did it from the previous penalty this has given them a bit of a chance to just get their breath back Selkirk just now needing to spend some time on the ball and make the hearts and balls work a bit they've tapped and they've moved but it looks like they're going to try and stretch them touchline to touchline and see if they can find some space for when they come back and again. They've got that danger man, Ryan Cottrell, over on that far side, but he gets wrapped up. Another penalty here to Selkirk. They want to go quickly. Um, Ewan McDougall just taking the ball forward, uses Scott McClymont as the dummy. Calm Anderson here then has got options outside if he floats that ball over, but it's now Sooty who's uh, back, found a little gap, but he's got a bit of pace about him as well. And he's burst through Ferguson there. There's a little bit of company. He's got an opportunity to offload here, but he cannot managed to get the offload in but it's going to be yet another penalty here to Selkirk they try and go quick but the referee's going to bring that back and it's an opportunity perhaps missed there for Selkirk but it was a really good break there from Sooty who uh, just almost almost if he could just escape the clutches from Ferguson he could almost went in for a score great footwork and he put the pedal down he gets inside the 22 Ferguson really smart gives away quite a, a, a cute penalty there and I'm surprised the referee didn't bring his card out because that's as professional as you get rolling over the top of the ball it prevents Selkirk playing it and it's Callum Anderson over here Hugh McDougall just floating the ball over missing out Clark Young and it's now Aaron McComb he's got a little bit of a gap in front of him and just goes for it draws in the defenders now it's Sooty here offering himself up he's had a really impressive final to be fair he's uh, shown a lot of good runs and good work rate off the ball Clark Young now going pinning back the ears trying to go through the gap he's sucked two players in and he's uh, hoping to try and recycle that ball good uh, support play from Selkirk who are managing to just clear over there as the ball goes wide now Sooty again so he's got options slows it down Cottrell Cottrell just with a wee hop skip and a jump Fend he's got an opportunity here but he offloads it he was trying to find Clarkson Clarkson was not there and um, it's a nice chip over the, the head there from Kyle Adams but cannot gather and it's still in play, big hit there from Selkirk again, the ball's came back on their side and it is Clarkson, Clarkson taking the ball up towards the 22 now, setting up, it's um, certainly frantic stuff here, Aaron McComb now finding Callum Anderson on this side, just trying to skip, just trying to manipulate this defence, he's got options here, Clark Young just got caught a little bit too shallow there, couldn't offer himself up, but luckily for them they've got another penalty and Clark Young's going yet again, he's going quick. He's got options there, he's got a big looping pass out wide, but he's just going to try and set something up in midfield. Ewan McDougall's a, an excellent person to have in support to try and clear it out. And Aaron McComb has just caught a little bit daisy there. And the ball comes back on the hearts and ball side, and they've got an opportunity to break here. Ferguson, Ferguson over the halfway. He's got a little bit of company with Cottrell. Cottrell's going to have to work hard to get back and to bring his man down, brings him down. And there's an opportunity here to try and offload the ball. Can't get it, knock on. And the referee's going to give a penalty here to the hearts and balls and I think it's going to be Clarkson getting a yellow card and I'll quickly try and see Kelly correct decision there from the referee legally yes um, in the manner of the game no no there we go <laughs> um, the, he was going over he was going to try and win the ball hearts and balls went to pop it up and it's for me it's just a general knock on yeah I could, I could see I'm glad you came in there Bruce as well because I was going to ask you quickly but the, the, the abrupt no tells me exactly what you think so James Ferguson just uh, trying to skip there it's now went over on the far side to Kyle Adams trying to get round but really against strong defence but he's just sneaked away a little bit over in the corner Kyle Adams has scored a try and it's going to be the hearts and balls going in the lead for the first time in this game Selkirk are on the floor so you wonder if this could potentially be the last play of the game Selkirk are 
on the deck. We've got Aaron McComb hunched over there. We've got a couple of players flat out over on the far side. So everything's telling me that could be the winning score for the first Kings of the Sevens tournament. James Ferguson taking it quick. And it was a great try there from Kyle Adams. But the referee blows for full time. And really, you know, you can analyse this game all day. Um, it comes down to that decision, Bruce. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. I feel for Henry Clarkson. He makes a tackle. He's going over to win the ball. He gets popped up, knocked on. Yellow card. They're able to play. They score in the corner. Uh, and then Ferguson, who's had a tremendous afternoon nails the conversion for the touchline and you know Selkirk were probably more organised but then it gets to the final and their set piece uh, deteriorated unfortunately and I'm sure Whitey will be disappointed with that but the Bob showed a huge amount of ticker and desire and defence when they had the ball they made their chances count and I think they're a pretty popular winning team It's certainly a, a good start to the Kings of the Sevens a really really interesting final and um, but it is the hearts and balls mighty balls who take the first Kings of the Sevens tournament they defeated Selkirk here 12 points to 7 That must be a, a gutting way to lose a, a Kings of the Sevens final. Oh, absolutely gutting. Last play of the game, and Ken, it was a. We've had a tough afternoon. Just one, just scrape through every round, and then thought we just had it at the end, and then ah, just dashed away. On a personal level, I thought you played really, really well in the final. You were really industrious. You almost made a, a try to save and tackle over that side, which won a penalty. And they're the things that can, on the balance of a sevens game, that can win games. But you must be impressed and proud of your, your own personal oh, performance. It's a young team the day as well. I thought there's a lot of new faces like Ben Pickles and Andrew Grant. I thought they were great the day. And, yeah, and uh, Arne McComb was great as well. But, aye, it's just tough. Oh, it was unbelievable, you know. Um, we had our first outing last week at Edinburgh City Sevens. We didn't do too great, so we... We, we trained a bit, we got together and you know, we made it hard for ourselves but really impressed with the boys, we've dug deep and you know, came, with, came away with the win, it was you know, things dreams are made of, it was brilliant. There were three games that I can certainly call off the top of my head, the Melrose game, um, the Gala game and then the final as well, you, you were sluggish to start yeah. um, and then finally got into it, what did you put that down to? I, I don't know, I think it's uh, a bunch of boys you know, thrown together from different clubs, you know, we, we do train but you know, maybe it's just a little bit of fatigue or something coming in, but you know, we like you say we we done well to get get back into the game at the end of it and uh, you know get the win. The Kings A7 is the highest standard, really. You know, that's where where you want to be playing. You know, it's competitive week in week out. So um, to be an invitational side, to first of all to get invited here, you know, it's good, and then to come out on top, you know, absolutely amazing. It's certainly great to have rugby back again and congratulations to the three winners of the competition. Tomorrow we'll bring you the highlights of the Colt 7 competition which will wrap up the Peebles Festival of Rugby. But for now, from the BRTV team, cheerio! Oh.